This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, and Happy New Year to you. We're kicking off 2022, as many podcasters, bloggers, and prognosticators are, by looking ahead and anticipating what may come. But I've got a couple things working against me in that regard. First, I've been observing and commenting on the social media space for over 15 years now. I've seen many a prediction post. I've written a few myself. That means I know most of them are nothing more than pissing in the wind. No one who makes them has a clue what will actually happen. They just guess. And as long as they don't go off the deep end, and some do, they sound fairly smart and we nod and smile. The other thing working against me is that I'm quite a contrarian when it comes to the wide-eyed optimism of the tech elite and the 1% of the one percenters that most of the truly new innovations and activities will apply to. So my prediction posts aren't real sexy, but they're far more realistic than most. I want to help you prepare for 2022 and what may come, but I also want you to be grounded in reality so you don't waste time or money preparing for someone else's imagination. Today on the show, I give you the honest truth about what to expect in 2022, like it or not. Before we get to that, I want to share another case study and story about how one brand uses Tagger. It's our presenting sponsor and a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and measure success. I recently caught up with Alexandra Walsh at 3 Day Blinds. They provide consulting and products in the premium custom window treatments category. We started out talking about how she uses Tagger. Tell me how you and 3 Day Blinds use Tagger. Sure. Well, so originally in 2021, our team, me and my manager decided that we wanted to really spearhead our influencer efforts. And we were contacted by a company to work with like hundreds of influencers. And it's just, we realized one, the partnership didn't work out. And two, it just wasn't for us. We have to be so specific and hands-on for who we want when it comes to influencers and because we are a luxury good we can't just send a sample or a product out to hundreds of people we pick one a month maybe we would like to now pick three a month and which it's possible now with tagger which is great but we decided to do it all in-house and that's when we started researching different influencer technology tools and tagger just surpassed all of the other companies we were looking at. Thanks to Alexandra and 3 Day Blinds for sharing their use of Tagger. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, just visit jason.online slash Tagger today. That's jason.online slash Tagger, T-A-G-G-E-R. What you should really be watching for and expecting from Influence Marketing in 2022. That's next on Winfluence. Ah, the new year. This week, you're probably going to see dozens of headlines pass through your feed predicting what will happen in 2022 in various segments of business and industry. You'll see the top 10 trends to watch for, the top five shifts in consumer behavior, the top this many or that many ways your business can do this or that to stay ahead of whatever. They're all formulaic and predictable clickbait posts and episodes proven year over year to drive a good number of clicks through December and January. By my estimation, about 95% of them, including the ones I've written over the years, are nothing more than spaghetti noodles on the wall. We hope a couple of them stick, but most of them are just rattling off some bullshit in the name of a few more clicks to our fabulous content. It's not that I think all the trends and prediction posts are useless. It's always good to see what people are thinking about because it does give you an idea of the main topics you should be thinking about for your business. But not a lot of stock needs to be placed into any of these posts. 
most of the time they're wrong, or at least way off base in terms of urgency. From 2003 until 2016, more than half of those posts declared that this year, this coming year, is going to be the year of mobile. And it took about that long, more than a decade, for mobile web usage to shift from the margins to the majority. October of 2016 was the official first month that mobile web usage surpassed that of desktop computers, if you're keeping track. That was nine and a half years after the debut of the iPhone, which in my mind was the linchpin moment in the mobile revolution. But think about that. If you had believed every prediction that your business should shift all your thinking to mobile first back in 2007, you would have been nine years ahead of your customers and probably would have spent three to four times as much money in order to stay on their timeline. Because all that technology and development you paid for from 2013 to 2015 was a lot faster, more reliable, and cheaper than it was in 2007 or 8. This is an influence marketing podcast, so it's easy for me to declare 2022 the year of the influencer. But would it be any more so than it was in 2021 or 2020? Probably not. The industry is growing. The creator economy and brands supporting it are moving up and to the right in terms of resources allocated. The practice is generally accepted and considered a smart use of marketing dollars now. But it has taken just as long to get there. We didn't call this influencer marketing in 2006, but we were still doing the same thing. We called it blogger outreach or new media relations back then, but we were still finding social media influencers to help communicate about our products and services to their audiences. The industry is maturing, and you need to stay connected to the opportunities, challenges, and best practices. But you are, just by listening to this podcast. Thank you, by the way. I glanced through the prediction posts last week and pulled out a couple of topics to share with you today. I'll do that and then give you the truth, what you really need to know about each of them. First off, the metaverse. Zuckerberg and the Silicon Valley lemmings are putting on their Oculus headsets and running off the virtual cliff trying to tell us that Web 3.0 is here. Imaginary property next to Snoop Dogg's imaginary property is selling for half a million dollars on some such fake world. I wouldn't buy that if I actually got to hang out with Snoop Dogg for doing so, and I don't think brands should either. The truth about the metaverse is that we don't know what it will actually look like or what a true metaverse experience will be for consumers. It's a very vague notion right now. Everything you see and can experience here in January of 2022 looks and smells a lot like Second Life. That was the big hot trend for a half second back in 2006. Turns out when the only people lined up to play there are the 1% of the 1%, the uber rich and the technorati, There's not enough real people there for it to matter. Do you think that your customer base has the money, the time, and the technological savvy to spend a bunch of time in Ready Player One? I didn't think so. Pay attention to the news and case studies about the metaverse. If your influence partners are experimenting there, discuss it with them and ask them to help you think through how you can participate with them in relevant ways. But know that the metaverse is going to be that year of the topic for a good 10-15 years before any of that vision becomes a true reality. And it will only have that staying power if the gap between the have oculuses and the have not oculuses gets progressively smaller. NFTs are this year's Cabbage Patch dolls. Yeah, a few of them are going to be worth a good bit of cash in 20 years, but most of them will be ugly JPEGs you paid too much for and can't give away. The fundamental value of any type of art is the quality of the work or the impact of the artist. Yes, NFTs are an interesting virtual spin on this, and the blockchain nature of the ledger associated could do wonders for intellectual property rights, royalties, and residuals for those who create or own them. But to think that everyone can create something that will have tremendous value here is like saying everyone is capable of producing an amazing Instagram feed. Go ahead. Go check on the first three people you can think of you went to high school with. How good is their Instagram feed? Well, that's what I thought. Again, pay attention to NFTs. Talk to your creators about them and how they're using or creating them. 
but don't shift resources to become the best NFT brand. You might wind up like all those companies that built apps for the BlackBerry. This is the year of influencer e-commerce. Oi. Look, if you sell products online and you have a handful of content creators who love your stuff and can find ways to encourage their audience to buy some, by all means, turn that channel into a revenue driver. But don't forget that people consuming influencer content are normally not in shopping mode. You don't log into Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook to browse products and services. You log in to be entertained, check in on family and friends, and see content from the people you find interesting in the world. That's why they call it social media. People go there to be social. They go to Amazon to shop. The influencers who will help you become good at driving e-commerce through the social channel have a special relationship with their audience. It's based on a lot of trust, and there's a lot of nuance to how they present opportunities for them to buy things. I would guess that less than 10% of content creators out there are even modestly good at this. Now, keep looking for them, but don't expect your 250 micro-influencers to suddenly create social commerce. And if they do, it won't be because they're micro-influencers. It will be because you made an incredible offer that would work on any channel. Okay, that's probably enough of me being a contrarian. My hope is that you will keep a finger on the pulse of all these potential trends and breakthroughs so that when you, your content creators, and most importantly, your prospective customers are ready, you can capitalize in smart ways. That is going to require a healthy dose of both optimism and skepticism along the way. What influencer social media trends are you focused on for 2022? I'd love to hear your plans and thoughts about what we'll be talking about as having proved itself to be true this time next year. Record a voice memo and email it to me or just email me a regular email message with your thoughts to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comments on a future episode. Have a different question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence.